Hi guys, today I am going to show you the creation of this beauty. Um, it's a 14 by 10-ish serving tray, my first one. I freeformed the mold. Um, if you watch, the video is pieced together from multiple parts, but it will show every step of the way. All that's left is to clean up my edge. I'm gonna paint the edge silver, and then I'm gonna pour a top coat because I do have a couple parts that need a little bit of work. But if you wanna see how this was made, just keep watching. Thanks. Hi guys, it's Ray. Um, I am going to run through what I'm doing real quick and then get moving because I have, uh, this is actually a thousand milliliters of resin mixed up ready to go. So I don't want anything to happen to that because that would be a huge waste. So I will get to this in a minute, but first I'm going to show you what I'm using. I've got silver leaf flakes. I've got a teal mica powder. I've got an aqua alcohol ink. I'm gonna use a little bit of a dark blue paint called Deep Waters because I need a darker blue and I don't want it. I don't have a dark enough blue mica and I don't wanna use ink for everything. I'm gonna use this ink called Monsoon. This ink is aqua. Alright, these are both aquas, so I'm going to eliminate that one. I'm actually going to go with this one, which is Glacier, which I didn't close before, so I got it all over myself. This is crushed glass that I tinted with a little bit of the aqua ink. That's why I ended up with two aquas pulled by accident. This is just a micro pearl mica. This mica is called silver, but it's kind of dark. But I wanted a little bit of a dark gray, but not too dark. This mica is actually a pearl white mixed with a silver. Actually, I actually think this one was um, this one was antique silver. This one's actual silver. I'm gonna move these out of the way as I go. This is just mica glitter. So, crushed mica. And this is just more of the crushed glass. My mom actually sent me this crushed glass. I like it, I'm gonna have to find out where she got it and get some more. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get started mixing. And as I mix, I'll move the cups out of the way so I can explain what I'm doing here <clears throat> or what I already did here so I poured 500 milliliters of my part A 500 of my part B I mixed it with a silicone spatula which I'll just wipe off when I'm done so I'm just going to fill these cups I actually have no idea how much I need for this mold, so this will be a learning process. I think that was one of the clear cups. Not sure. All right, with the micas, I only want to mix a tiny bit to start because. Um, I've been finding that if I fill the cup completely, they'll get a little clumpy on me. So I'm going to try a small mix and then adding the rest. I am dripping a little bit into my mold, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. I'd rather drip over the mold than all over my table. So... And then these three will be for alcohol inks. I 
I do have my surface protected. I did level my project because this is a fairly large project. So I did take extra care in leveling it. I'm just going to grab a wipe. I'm going to wipe up the edge of this so it doesn't drip everywhere. Set that aside a minute. Okay. I'll go ahead and give these a good mix just to get them started. So I'm going to be going for a geode style tray. This mold I freeformed from silicone. I did it um, three to four layers high and then I kind of hand shaped it. It is going to require some edge sanding when I'm finished. I'll do that with my rotary tool. And I may paint the side or use a paint marker. I may do the edge silver when I'm done but that will kind of depend on how it looks finished. So, I'm not going to mix um, I do have to move fairly quickly because I really don't want any of this setting up on me. Um I'm not going to mix the glass into resin. That I'm just going to sit in place. I might put a tiny base down before I apply them just to kind of hold them, but I'm not actually going to mix and pour those. The mica glitter I am going to mix, so I'll do that. Um, the mica glitter used just in its pure form like this I found on other projects doesn't pack a whole lot of punch it just kind of um, gives a little bit of a sparkly effect so if you don't want a super glittery glitter it's almost like using sand in a project but a shimmery sand So, and that's going to be fairly thick, but that's fine. Like I said, I'm trying to move fairly quickly. These are already warm. It's just a lot of resin to work with at once. I don't expect this to fill the whole tray. Um, I'm going to come back in about four hours or so, and I'm just going to kind of set these out of the way as I go. I'm going to come back in, in about four hours and put my handles in and pour a clear coat on top. Four to six hours, somewhere in there. I'll explain about the handles in just a minute. Again, I'm hoping that the extra resin, if I don't need it, will hold. And I'll just use, um, use that on some molds when I'm finished here. Because I'd hate to waste any extra. And I really had no idea. I could have, I could have poured water in here and measured this and I probably should have but so this is that silver leaf even if your pieces are kind of big when you put them in they break apart and this is just going to be for the very very center so I may actually have mixed too much of that but we'll find out when you use paint 
and epoxy. You don't want a ton. So I'm literally just going to dip my stick and that's all I'm gonna start with. If you use too much, it will get stringy very, very fast. So it might be still somewhat translucent, but it should still be a fairly opaque layer. It shouldn't really go too translucent. Perfect. I want a darker color for like the outer edge. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna do the three inks. So I'm gonna need two more sticks for those. And these can be somewhat translucent, and they will be, which is fine. This is that one that I made a horrible mess with because I didn't put the top on all the way. But I'm kind of going for like a blue agate geode on this one. I'm just going to set those here just in case I need more. get those mixed and some of these cups do have a ton of bubbles on top so for this mold I knew I wanted a freeform rectangular shape so what I did was on the flip side of the silicone mat I worked on, I traced a 9 by 12 rectangle. I actually traced a bamboo cutting board that I have sitting here that I haven't poured on yet. I drew that on the back side, flipped it over, and, um, gosh, to make sure these don't fall off the edge, that would be a disaster. So this is that glitter, which fine glitters produce a ton of bubbles, and that is a fine glitter. Um, so I traced it out, I don't know if you can see the line there. And I took a tube of silicone in my caulk gun and did three layers around and dipped my fingers in soapy water, just regular Dawn dish soap and kind of formed my edge. Then I let it sit. Um, I usually let it sit to dry at least 24 hours. I shouldn't say usually because this is only the second freeform mold I've made. But let it sit and dry for at least 24 hours if you do a thicker pour. If you only did a single layer, you were doing something thin, shorter would be fine. But this one's actually been sitting outside in the garage for two days. Um, so it should be all set. I did look closely around the edge. There shouldn't be any leaks. I do have the caulk gun ready to go just in case there are leaks, but I'm hoping there won't be. And that is it for the mold prep. It's sitting on a piece of wood which has been leveled to the tables. Table. These are the handles I'm going to go with. I'm using silver, which is why I'm using silver leaf. I did put the screws on the bottom because if I sink them in just on their own, they'll be too short. So I did put the screws. I am going to find some way in the next four hours while this is curing to prop them up so they'll sit flat when I insert them. But I will pop back on and record that part too. This pearl is kind of separating. It's pretty thin color wise, but that's fine because I don't want all deep intense colors. That glitter is going to keep bubbling for 
quite a while. I'm just hitting everything with the torch really quick. When you do the ones with inks, be super careful because alcohol is super flammable. So you'll want to move fairly quickly when you do that. Okay. But I don't know if you can see with this mica glitter. Like I said, it looks like a sand. I mean, it's a more natural, earthy embed than other things. So, I'm going to move the handles out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and form the clear glass. I'm just going to do a random... What did I tell you I was going to do? I was going to put a little layer of clear epoxy. Did I do that? No. So, I'm going to move them out of the way. And I'm going to grab this. And I am just going to freeform a shape. And this is already getting super warm, so I may stop and um, break this down further. Into smaller cups. Alright, so now I'm going to move these back onto that. I want them kind of free and random. I don't want like a big old circle in the middle. So, I'm just going to push them around a little. I do want them kind of built up because this is going to get fairly deep. I want it to have more height than width. Okay. Wipe my gloves off quick. I think I need a tiny, tiny bit more of that glass. When you're done with your tray, you do want all of your glass embeds below the top surface, obviously. Okay, so that's it for that. The blue glass I want just, I'm not going to put that in yet. I'm going to hold off, I think, because I'm going to want it just on the tiny edge. So I'm going to wait on that. I think I'm going to run a tiny layer of the teal mica on the inside. And I will add to that later. And then I'm going to run just a tiny bit of the aqua ink inside that. I'm going to run a little bit of this on the outside, too. It is so warm in here. I am so nervous about this setting up way, way, way too fast. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of the silver leaf in the center. Like, quite a bit of it. Let it push that all the way out to the edge of the glass that color I used. Hopefully it won't overflow the glass. So I'm going to run, I'm just going to run layers now and start filling. I actually want 
this darker gray. The intent with that was to be like a stone edge. You know how a geode has that outer colored shell. So, I run that right along my edge. And again, this pour is not going to be a super fill. This is going to be a, um, the base layer. It's going to get filled, filled with clear over the top to the level I need it to be at. So, I'm gonna go ahead and run some more mica the blue and this is the dark blue ink this is the dark blue paint Oops. Wipe my gloves off quick. And I don't see any leaks running out the mold so far. So, so far so good on that. I'm going to go ahead with the pearl and run a couple lines. This one I don't want to pour because I don't want it to be huge. massive amounts. Not just yet anyways. What am I doing over here? I'm still fluid. Okay. I'm going to pour some more of this in this layer. And this may push the glass out some. I am perfectly okay with that. I'm going to run some right along that white that I just did too. <clears throat> so the center of this will be fairly translucent in the long run which is kind of what I would like to more opaque on the outer edge. And I'm just going to carefully keep building layers and let it just push itself full. And hopefully it won't blend too much. Hopefully it'll hold some of the shape and definition. I'm not going to hit this with the heat gun at all. I will torch it but I don't want to actually move it with heat. So. I'm kind of looking at it, trying to decide where I want to put that glitter layer. I think I do want to push some more of this blue on this edge. So I'm going to pour a little slower through this corner. This is that paint layer, so this is where it's going to start to transition to opaque. What else? Let's see. I think I'll run a string of the mica right back around where that glass is again and the glass has spread some again that's perfectly fine I do think I want some clear with the silver flake I feel like that's too much silver flake puddling I'm going to pour some in a cup over here Clear it 
still starting to set up on me, so I'm probably going to lose most of it. Go figure. Not what I wanted to happen, but story of my life. You can see how thick this is going in, which actually might be to my benefit because it might hold some of that back a little bit. So bear with me one second. Just trying to get the cup separated. So, back to this, actually, I'm going to come in with some more of that white, maybe. This is also starting to set up rapidly. I'm going to run a white over here. You can see how thick this has gotten. Hopefully that batch with the glitter isn't set up on me. Okay. Oh my god. Teal mica, I should say. And I'm going to have to mix up some more clear, unfortunately, at some point here. In a minute. This is that lighter silver. I think I'm going to run that right around here over this blue. I'm going to fill these corners in some more because I want the um, rounded edge on the corner more. Okay. Different, um, embeds kind of affect how quick things make set sometimes. I mean, I finished mixing this and started record, and I'm 27 minutes in. So, the working time on this was super short. This is that sand. I'm going to go and run this uh, pretty close to the outside just to give it that gritty, raw, natural feel towards the edge. And it's, it's going to work in, it's just going to kind of sit on the top for a second. And this is really thick anyways, just because of the way I mixed it in. I intentionally mixed it very thick. Not quite a one-to-one -one sand to resin, but pretty close. So, I'm going to 
grab a stick quick and I'm going to kind of drag around the edge and mix that and let it settle a minute. We'll go a couple of trips around. And then I'm actually going to drag back the other way. I gotta check my record time as well because I will run out of time. I'm gonna take these gloves off because they're getting pretty sticky. I've wiped them off a couple times now. Wipe my hand with a wipe quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that blue sand in. Or, yeah, blue glass. I'm going to put them just along the corners. I may actually just do two corners. I'll pick that one out and relocate it in a second. Like that corner and this corner. And because I inked these, I'm keeping them away from the other layers with the ink so it doesn't react at all. I'm kind of tuck these in. Again, you don't have to worry about them sticking up a little bit at this point because um, this whole thing is going to get a clear coat sooner rather than later, it looks like. You can tell how thick that's getting already. Then I'm going to pick this piece of glass out and just tuck it back over there. So, I think that that's going to be it for now. I'm going to come back in with a clear coat in a little bit and the handles in a little bit. And I'm going to salvage what I can of this resin that's left over here. And, um... I'm actually going to mix up a fresh batch of clear now, I think, after I use what's left of this if I can't, and put it on top, and then I'll come back in later with a full another coat in the handles, but I'm just going to give this a quick torch, because I do see some bubbles from that sand layer mostly. So I'm probably going to watch this for a half hour or so after I put the other clear coat on. But I'll be back in a little bit to show you the next step. Thanks. So I did salvage about four ounces of the resin out of my big tub I mixed. Um, the rest is going to be a loss. I'm going to have to guess how much it was after just because I am trying to figure out how much this thing will hold. So I'm going to pour some more clear in the middle here. And this is setting, so this is... Um, it might sink in a little bit more, but probably a lot of it's just going to float on top. Like a flood coat. Which is fine. but I do want to get it more filled than I had it. Um, I'm probably actually going to have to come in. I was going to leave it like four hours before I insert the handles, but I'm now thinking that I'm going to have to basically go find something to prop my handles right now and almost immediately do that. I'm going to test to see if I can get some more of this glass to sink, because it did spread quite a bit. Again, it's going to get another flood coat, a thick coat, so if they don't sink all the way, it's fine. 
It'll lead some towards the surface. But I do want a little bit more on there. This is just, I've had it set fairly quick before, but this is, um, this has been particularly fast. So, um, I don't really want to mess anything up, but I want to, I'm just going to go in with a small stick. And you can see how thick this is already. So yeah, I'm going to have to prep my flood coat in a few minutes and go ahead and embed my handles. I'm going to torch what I just added on the top real quick. Get it moving a little bit. Get the bubbles out. Um, but I'm going to get prepped to mount my handles and do a full flood coat and then I will let it sit and I will I will come back for that part and then I will come back for the unmolding part as well um, but yeah this project is uh, been different to say the least perhaps the next one I will do on a cooler day I mean, very little of that is fluid at this point. So, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. Um, let me get my other light. So, I put two rulers across the top. And... They're about even spaced and they're pretty evenly across the center. I kind of feel like I want them a little further out though. So a little over 11 inches apart. About 11 and a half and about 11 and a half that's gonna help me figure out center center on here is six inches because I'm going to attempt to embed my handles and then do my foot coat so hopefully these will stand up hopefully they'll go in um, So these are spaced three inches apart, so I'm going to go about an inch and a half either side of the six inch mark. And actually, this is pretty firmly set, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those screws that I thought I was going to need because I don't think I'm going to need them now. So. And I can still see where those marks were, so I'm not going to worry about re-measuring. And this top edge is a little bit into that glass that I put in there, so I'm going to have to work it in a little bit. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove these ones. And then do the same on the other side. And I have another 800 milliliters of resin mixed up next to me, ready to go. Oops, same thing, about five and a half, 
and seven and a half on this side. Work it down in a little bit. And I may set one of these rulers on either side to try and just make sure they hold in place after I pour this flood coat. So this is just going to be a clear coat. Again, this is about 800 milliliters. And I am hoping that it will be enough to fill as deep as I'd like it. I probably should have actually embedded my handles sooner because that whole base was just curing super duper fast. Yep. That's what I was concerned with. Sorry if I'm getting my head in the frame. I really wanted to do a full pour before I set this over here, but for the moment, I'm just going to set that on there. And I'm trying to keep an eye on how deep this is getting because I don't want to overflow the mold at all. So that is not quite everything I mixed, it's about three quarters of what I mixed. Um, I may get a little bit more in there, but probably not all of it, but I do want to go ahead and torch that quick. Get all these bubbles out, and I'm going to torch this again a couple times. seems to be sticking just fine. This one's giving me a little bit of trouble. But I do want to remove that and check it. I do actually want to try and wipe it off a little bit. what I was going for. So, yeah, I am going to put this back on here. Push that back in as hard as I can. I will pull it back off in a few minutes to torch again, but pour a little bit more. I'm worried about going over here. It seems to be the lowest spot in the mold. And I am going to get that all in. So. Basically. I'll be able to smooth that little bit off. It's not actually overflowing the edge. So that's good. Quick check. Okay, like that's a little not straight. Okay. And I do think they look pretty even. And it's hard, you have a slightly irregular shape to begin with. So. But, that's it. Hopefully, 
this top coat will dry nicely and then I can call it done. I'm going to be pretty diligent on watching for bubbles for a little bit. Sneak that out and sneak it back in. I will be pretty diligent on watching for bubbles because I don't plan to do another flood coat. Um, and I don't want to have to sand it now that the handles are in place. Because that would be a pain. I'm going to just prop this handle too, just in case. So that is it. That is my first freeform geode tray mold poured. I will come back probably tomorrow morning and unmold it. If I get back tonight to do it, I'll make sure I record. Um, I did have to pick out a little hair from here, so I did end up with a tiny bit of debris, but I don't think it's the end of the world. So, and I don't think I can get it out at this point, so I'm actually just going to leave it alone. Um, sometimes it's better to not even try. But, thanks for watching to this point. I'll pop back in real, real quick and unmold it and show you the finished product. But other than that, that's it. Please give me a like and subscribe and I will give you a close up when it is finished. Thanks. Good morning. I'm back. I am going to unmold this quick. Um, off camera, I had a couple of little issues with these two corners. Uh, mostly I got my rulers that I had holding up my handle stuck to it, so these edges are a little unsmooth, so it's going to require a little finishing and a little top coat, <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty heavy. I may have poured it thicker than it needed to be. It's coming off easily. And like I said, this is freeform, so it's not a smooth, commercially made mold. So it is going to need edge sanding, um, but a rotary tool is what that's going to take. I'm just going to move that out of the way. But overall, I am pretty happy with this. Once I get it sanded down and smoothed out, that's the bottom side. Bottom and the top don't look too, too different in this case, which is good. You can see where that top layer is compared to the bottom layer. But I think overall it looks pretty great. I am probably going to sand the back side as well. Oops, sorry. I haven't decided yet if I want to clear coat the back again. The back does have a couple little lines from the I used the back side of this mat, and this mat does have like, I thought the back sides were completely smooth, but it does have a tiny bit of the texture showing through. It's not even necessarily anything somebody else would notice, but I certainly notice. So, but. There you have it. It's complete. I'm going to go sand it at some point today or tomorrow. And like I said, I may, after it's sanded, um, 
do a coat of silver on the side. I haven't decided yet. I'll decide once it's completely sanded. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I am. Um, I'm curious what it weighs. My scale's not handy though. But it is fairly heavy. I mean, this is solid. So, for my first tray, not too bad. I'm pleased. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and get in touch with me here on Facebook. However, I'm just going to bring that up one more time. You can see all that glass in there. It's still got a good mix of translucent and opaque. So, I'm pretty pleased. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.